YouTube. I'm back in the shop after the Thanksgiving holiday and I'm ready to wrap up the horizontal stabilizers and elevators. So today I'm going to focus on taking an incomplete panel from this to this. This is the almost complete left side panel. You can see I've added the top sheeting, the tips, the leading edge stock, the gap seals, and I've also built out and hinged the elevator sections. The servo and linkage are temporarily installed. You can see where a little fairing will go here later to cover up the exposed push rod. So, time to get onto the other side so I can move on with this build. So the first thing I'm going to do is prep the surface for glue. I'm using okay. a woodpecker here, which is a balsa building tool, but it's a great tool to use if you want to put a bunch of holes in foam real quick. You go ahead and apply your glue, that, uh, not too much because it's going to expand, and use a scrap piece of balsa or foam to spread it real thin. Once that's done, you can go ahead and reattach the wing skin. When you're happy with the placement, put the panel back in the wing bed. The wing bed is going to actually hold the panel to the formers and make sure that nothing twists or shifts while the glue sets up. Then you just toss a bunch of weight on top and wait for the glue to dry. Once the glue has had time to set up, go ahead and pull the panel out and do a quick inspection. You want to make sure your seams are tight and that it feels like the skin is really adhered to all of the ribs. If you're happy with everything, go ahead and start trimming off the excess balsa. Here I'm preparing to install the balsa stock that will become the leading edge. Before I install it, I'm actually going to take a woodpecker tool to the panel again, just to prep the surface to make sure that it's ready for glue. I like to use painter's tape to provide the necessary clamping forces, and I use it pretty generously. Now I know it's a little bit wasteful, but I've never had an issue with painter's tape marring the surface. Here I'm applying a layer of, of tape to protect the skin surface while I use a razor blade to go through and quickly carve off a lot of material, saving myself some time when I go to sand the leading edge. Now I'm going to use my sanding bar just to clean up the leading edge a little bit. I'm not going to worry about really rounding it off yet because I'm going to do that once I attach the wing bed. Once it looks good enough, I go ahead and move on to attaching the tip of the panel. This is just a block of balsa that will get sanded to shape later, but you can see here I'm using a generous amount of painter's tape again to provide the clamping forces. Before that sets up, I do a quick test fit with the template for my elevator section. The elevator section is built with more traditional balsa building techniques. Now, I'm not much of a balsa builder, so please feel free to correct me if I'm doing this completely wrong. My method was just to transfer my references directly to a sheet of balsa, attach stock for the leading edge and strips for each of the ribs, and then sand everything to shape. Once I was happy with the shape of the elevator, I moved on to shaping the tip of the panel. Now this took a little bit longer because there was more material to remove, but it came out really nice. You can see here I'm also doing the sanding directly in front of my air cleaner, which sucks a lot of the balls out of me. Alright, almost done. I want to show you guys a tool that I use for doing my gap seals. Now this is a little custom sanding block. This one lets me sand in exactly a half inch and five eighths of an inch from a edge. So this comes in handy when I need to install my gap material. You can see this is a one inch wide strip of 1 64th inch plywood and I want it installed exactly one half inch into this surface. So I'm going to take my one half inch side here and all I'm going to do is drag it across the, uh, drag it across the surface here and it will sand in a perfectly straight channel across my trailing edge that will accommodate my gap seal. Super easy, nice and clean. Once the channels are sanded in, I go ahead and attach that strip for the gap seal with a little bit of CA glue. Then I do the same thing on the opposite side. And then for good measure, I run a thin bead along the inside seam. The last thing I'm going to do is carefully cut into the elevator surface and install a pair of control horns. I'm going to use a 440 ball link that will be situated between the control horns to connect to the push rod.
So that's about as far as I'm taking this today. There is still a little bit more work to do when I cover the elevators and prep the stabs for fiberglass, but that'll get done when I have more parts ready to go. I do plan to remove some unneeded material in this central section, but to do that, I need to have the fuselage built to the point where I can install all this. So that'll be up next. For the fuselage, I'm going to uh, borrow another one of John Morgan's build techniques, and I can't wait to see how it turns out. Uh, remember, this fuselage is going to be 100 inches long, which is 14 inches longer than this workbench. So it's going to be a fun challenge. And uh, man, I am still so pumped about this build. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.